Hi, Dr. Sridhar here. Uh, welcome to my channel. I hope you have subscribed uh, to the channel and uh, please do like the videos as this will enable uh, YouTube uh, to share it with more colleagues. The more engagement, the more the video reaches. And uh, please do share with colleagues as well. Many of you have asked for a video on uh, sedation. Obviously, this is not going to be a detailed lecture, but a short summary of what I feel is the right approach to sedation in newborns. So the question is to sedate or not to sedate. So why do we consider analgesia or sedation in babies? Newborns feel pain. They are often agitated if they are uncomfortable and this increases their metabolic rate. And there are studies which have shown that the noxious stimuli in the initial period may have long lasting impact as the baby grows and matures. Systemic effects of pain and discomfort are noted on blood pressure, oxygenation, as well as blood glucose. So many of you may see a stressed baby has hyperglycemia, may desaturate, increasing the oxygen requirements, and uh, we see the blood pressure rising when they are agitated. So it's essential that we sensitize our team uh, to be aware of pain. We have pain scores which you can use in your unit as a regular basis, and uh, we should try our best to reduce pain and discomfort. In my video on uh, minimizing interventions, I have mentioned about how to cluster care and also developmentally friendly care. These are important measures. But in addition, we try to uh, combine procedures so that we don't handle the baby more. Try to combine the sampling. Don't do any routine bloods. Just do it as needed. So we have simple non-pharmacologic measures for uh, reducing uh, discomfort. So mother cuddling or the nurse cuddling the baby and development friendly care. Uh, sucking or breastfeeding can soothe the baby. Uh, sucrose analgesia has been well shown, so we use 22% sucrose and it can be used uh, for painful procedures and both in preterm and term babies. However, be careful with repeated use in a premature baby and uh, more than four times uh, in a day is not advisable. You can repeat uh, during the same procedure as well. Uh, feed and tuck is uh, appropriate where suitable, for example, for sedation or sleeping for uh, imaging. And we should choose the minimally invasive and least painful options when we do interventions. So do we need to sedate ventilated babies? So obviously synchronized ventilation is the norm. Uh, Pre-medication for intubation and the brief analgesia for painful procedures like chest drain insertion uh, can be considered but no routine sedation or analgesia is needed for ventilated babies. So I have been following this approach for more than 15 years and uh, the nursing staff easily understand that the ventilator synchronizes the breaths and uh, if the baby is agitated, we need to look at what else is provoking it rather than trying to sedate the baby. We need that in conditions like uh, PPHN where again it should be for a short period to tide over the acute crisis and wean quickly to the lowest dose. Uh, for post-operative pain, of course, it's essential to use a good uh, pain relief. Uh, we use morphine infusion at higher doses for the first 24 hours, but then wean quickly uh, using paracetamol, uh, which can be used rectally or IV as well. And um, when we need high frequency, some form of sedation is needed. We used to sedate more, but nowadays the concept is allowed a baby to self-ventilate, uh, have spontaneous breathing during high frequency which assists the baby's gas exchange and reduces the requirements. So even on high frequency, we only use minimal sedation. Uh, what medication should be used for sedation? Morphine is the most commonly used. Low doses are used uh, for a short duration and this should not impact the neurodevelopmental outcome. However, the Neopain study as well as other research has shown uh, high doses if prolonged uh, might cause withdrawal reactions and long-term concerns, especially cerebellar hypoplasia and uh, potential impact on IQ. Uh, fentanyl is similar to morphine being an opioid, but it's very potent uh, and it has a short half-life and rapid onset. So it's more useful for acute procedures and for pre-medication for intubation. However, we should be very careful when we use fentanyl. It has to be given over three to five minutes uh, very slowly. Uh, please remind the nurses how long three to five minutes is because if you give it as a push, uh, the baby goes for chest wall rigidity and it's quite difficult to bag. I've had a few babies uh, where it's quite difficult to bag. They may be, have bradycardia and you may need chest compression and a quick intubation uh, during the process. So uh, if you're using fentanyl, supervise the procedure, be sure that someone with the good intubation skill is around and you need a mask with a good seal. LMA can help in these cases as well because the seal is more effective with LMA. 
So uh, intubation and chest drain uh, fentanyl is in given and it can be given as a continuous infusion as well and uh, at a lower dose, much lower dose and wean quickly, same principle applies. Midazolam has been shown to have significant uh, side effects on uh, neurodevelopment as well as it prolongs the duration of ventilation, uh, prolongs the time taken to reach full feeds and obviously uh, fluid redistribution is a big issue with midazolam as well because there is water retention and uh, uh, chest wall edema. So we may have hypotension and there is increased risk of IVH related to that. Neurodevelopmental concerns are noted and I mentioned the fluid shift. Uh, try to avoid midazolam if you need a sedative agent use for a minimal period. Don't use higher doses if you are using for sedation. Uh, remember that midazolam doesn't have much of an analgesic effect, so if you need analgesia, we need morphine with midazolam. Uh, paralytic agents like succamethonium, pancuronium, rocuronium, atracurium, these can be used again to tide over acute crisis in the post-operative severe cases like diaphragmatic hernia, tracheal fistula for the first day or so. You don't need to keep them paralyzed for a long time, allow the baby to gain back their breathing effort. Even in diaphragmatic hernia, I tend to wean off the paralysis by day two, day three. The earlier we wean off, the less problems we face with fluid shifts. In PPHN, if you use, you can use a bolus of a paralytic to tide over. Don't start an infusion unless it's essential. The hypotension may be negative in these cases. A quick word about uh, the new medication, relatively new, dexmeditomidin or presidex. It's quite uh, long used in PICUs and uh, anesthetists uh, have used it for a long time as well. In neonatology for the past 8 to 10 years, it's uh, gaining use. Uh, it's an alpha-2 agonist <clears throat> and it's safe to use. There is no inhibition of respiratory function as well as no uh, impact on gut motility. So side effect profile is good. Uh, there is a possible reduction in apoptosis and possible neuroprotection. So even in uh, asphyxiated babies undergoing cooling, you can consider this instead of using opioids. Uh, bradycardia has been noted as a side effect and the dose we can start with 0.1 microgram per kilogram per hour and increase gradually. The maximum dose is 1 microgram per kilo per hour. So uh, in our unit, we have used it as post-operative uh, sedative and uh, it works well. Obviously, uh, in general, uh, recapping, if you have a unit where you are used to uh, using a routine sedation or analgesia for ventilated babies, you need a education pattern, so you have to train this team, you have to uh, reassure them that uh, we can cuddle the baby, we can do more skin-to-skin -skin care, we can uh, use sucrose, sucrose analgesia briefly, uh, developmental friendly care should be applied and because the ventilation is synchronized, once the intubation is done, the baby shouldn't really need uh, uh, analgesia. The tube uh, discomfort gets habituated as well. So the earlier uh, you wean the babies off the ventilation, it's better and not using sedation is much better from that point of view. If you have a very sick baby and you need to use analgesia, use it for the minimum duration of time. I hope uh, this is helpful. Uh, thank you. Uh, one quick point about uh, use of caffeine in babies needing IV sedation. So caffeine is a stimulant and it's used for apnea of prematurity. It's used early in babies who are likely to cope with non-invasive ventilation. Uh, so, in babies who are needing uh, sedation because they are having a higher requirement, I said that you won't routinely use sedation or analgesia. So, if you are using that because the ventilation is tough, you can hold the caffeine in these cases because it's paradoxical. You give a stimulant and a sedative analgesic at the same time. Uh, so, uh, you can hold the caffeine and you can restart it before the extubation. You may consider a uh, 10 milligram per kilo loading dose uh, or a full loading dose if it's more than five days since the last dose. So review this practice as well. So I, I hope uh, this helps. To summarize, only use sedation if essential and not as a routine. Stick to the lowest required dose which is uh, 5 to 10 microgram per kilo per hour of morphine or its equivalent and use presidex if uh, needing more and avoid uh, midazolam or paralytics unless it's unavoidable and wean them off quickly. Use IV or rectal paracetamol uh, as analgesic to reduce the dose of opioids for uh, post-operative pain. Uh, please do share this video and encourage your team uh, to review this and uh, reconsider your practice if you are doing something different.